Hello, this is Steve Sanangelo once again from the SRS Rock Report, and I'm glad you're here. Now, it's been a while since I've done a uh, YouTube video, but this is an important video. Uh, it's going to be about the silver price breakout, which I wrote about several weeks ago, and the, uh, this update is going to be on the key levels to look for in 2019. Now, before I get started, I want to say that my work and research on my website has been mostly on the fundamentals, and I didn't pay much attention to technical analysis. A lot of my followers still don't pay much attention to technical analysis. They say it doesn't matter in a rig market. Well, it, it, it does. And so in, in the last eight months or year, I've been watching the day trading markets and, and watching how stocks are just trading up and down off of moving averages, technical levels, and formations. So there is some method to the madness. And when I looked at silver and gold going back 40 years, I did see how some of these technical levels uh, allowed the breakouts or co that occurred over the past five, six years, 10 years in the precious metals at these key levels. So, but before I, I do want to say the fundamentals are the underlying drivers. We have to remember the fund fundamentals of the market actually drive the price, but these technical levels motivate hedge funds, traders, institutions to either buy more or sell more depending on these, these key technical levels. So now, as I mentioned, uh, back in July 12th, 2019, this year, just a few weeks ago, uh, silver was trading in this symmetrical triangle formation. You can see it right here in this, this dash blue line. And it was coiling ever so tighter. And now when that does it, at some point, according to most technical analysis, it will break out. It could break out either up or it could break down. down. However, because gold broke out upwards a few weeks before, I had a good indication that silver was going to do the same thing. So now, this is a uh, the typical triangles that uh, traders look at. Uh, there's three of them. There's the three, the three triangle formations. Silver was in the uh, symmetrical triangle. It was doing this, and it did break out. Gold actually was in the ascending triangle. So when there's this resistance level, and it keeps bouncing up and going higher, when it breaks that, it's very bullish. We see a lot of traders moving in more people taking long positions. Now, a descending triangle, as it goes down to support, is very bearish. So if it breaks that, we see a lot more selling. And again, this is the gold chart going all the way back to 1981. We've got these key levels here. But we can see with the blue lines here, gold was trading in this ascending triangle, and it finally broke above it. And when it broke above it, it shot up almost $80 in a very short period of time. And silver? Silver has had this symmetrical triangle formation, and it has been trading in it, getting tighter and tighter. And I have to tell you, well, silver is not in a major bullish trend or a market right now, not quite yet. But it is very important that silver did break out above this little, above this triangle in, in an upward position instead of in a downward trend. And a downward trend would have been very bearish uh, for traders. So this is a very good sign. It's a very good start. And here's a close-up of the chart. It's a five-year chart. We could see the symmetrical triangle. Uh, silver broke out above it. And then we have these other two levels, which traders look at. The uh, blue line, which is the 50-month moving average. Again, if it's a monthly chart, and this is a monthly chart, each candlestick represents a full month of trading, we have a 50-month moving average. And the red line shown right here is the 200-month moving average. And you can see them on the right side of the chart. The price is here, 1640. The 50-month moving average is 1623, and these change as the prices move, and this is 1676. So silver not only broke above the symmetrical, which was very good, it also broke above the 50-month moving average. And here's where it sits on 
Friday, July 26th. So it's important that silver stays above this symmetrical triangle. And if it could stay above this uh, 50 month moving average, close above it, that would be good. But I believe it, it, it could continue to sell off. And a key level would be this 1550 area. I'll show you why. Before I get into that, this is a silver chart going back all the way to 1999. It's a 20 year chart. And we can clearly see there are two key, there are three key uh, indicators. We have two moving averages, the 50 month moving average, the 200 month in red, and then this upper or this lower rising trend line. Silver has been bouncing off of it since 2008. And we bounced off of here at the end of 2018 and in April, May, 2019. Now, this is a very important area. While silver has broken above this 50 month moving average, which I showed you in the prior chart, it hasn't gone above the 200 month. Traders are looking at this very carefully. Silver needs to move above this level, close above it significantly for it to be in a new bull market. So this is a, these three key levels are very important for silver, according to traders. Now, I want to switch up to the daily chart. And the daily chart shows we have two key levels here. Uh, this is 2018, 2019. Uh, we've got the 1550 level right here. And we've got the 1620 level. Now, the 1620 level back in 2018 was support until it fell below it. And as it, it fell below it, it kept, it, it retests it to try to break back, but it didn't. So it fell, fell below this 1550 level, and then it started back up. But if we look here, and these, let me tell you, these technical levels mean something. There's no coincidence that silver tried to touch these levels twice, in, at the end of January and in February. Did not go above it, came back down. And this here, I don't have it, but this was the rising trend line for the symmetrical triangle right in the bottom. But when silver finally broke above that 1550 level, it shot up a dollar in a very short period of time. Now, why is that important? Well, if we take the monthly chart and the daily chart, we could see that the 1550 level is important on both charts. It's important that if silver is going to correct, let's say the next month, it would need to stay above this symmetrical uh, line right here, the symmetrical triangle line, which is about the 1550 level. And if silver corrects here and comes back down, it's important that it stays above this 1550 level in both places to be in a bullish uh, trend. Now, we have another side of the story, which is the, uh, a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of people writing about this, commenters on my website, about the, the commercial short position. And this is a COT chart showing the commercial long and short positions. The, uh, the banks usually have the short positions, which are in red, and the longs are in these uh, blue bars here. So when the silver price reached a high back in uh, the beginning of February 2019, the, the shorts were at a high. As the silver price sold off, went to the 1440 level, we had a reduction. They liquidated. And this has been going on for years. So now we're seeing a much higher short position, which means that we could see a sell-off. Now, this is also a uh, hedger's position. It's much longer. That was about a year. This is 10 years. Now, what's interesting, this is the silver price here, and this is the net silver hedger's position, which was 76,000 right here, net. Now, what was interesting during the price rise from below 20, up to 50, we did see an increase, but we're not seeing the kind of volatility 
as we are in the last two, three years. I believe there's a lot more traders. There's a lot more. If the Chinese, as Alistair McLeod has said, that the Chinese are the new big uh, blue whale in the silver market. Uh, if we're starting, we're starting to see more volatility. So this would worry. Uh, this would worry. Uh, traders to think that we would see a sell-off, the price would fall. And it, it could. But I think what we're going to see as the silver price corrects, we're going to see a lot larger liquidation of silver short positions. Instead of moving the price down several dollars on, a, let's say, a 20 or 30,000 contracts of liquidation, we could see a dollar and we could, we could lose maybe 30 or 40,000. And so as the price continues higher, it would con consolidate higher. So if, as the fundamentals for silver become even better and better, I don't think we're going to see the short position increase as much as it did here compared to here. Now, another aspect of the uh, silver market is the optimism. And this is by, also by Sentiment Trader. Uh, here we have the silver price, and then this is the sentiment level. Down here is negative, and, the, and then here is uh, very positive. So when silver was rising, we could see it was breaking above to 80. That was the reading, 80. And then when, when it sold off, it was getting down to 30s. So, but even though, even though that silver is at 61, it's optimism rating, optics rating, it's still not at the above the 70 level as it was in 2016 or during these periods. So we could still see silver move up. I'm not saying it will move up this cycle, but there's plenty of room for silver to continue being become more positive for investors. Now, I showed you what the silver price was doing and what we could see for a correction. 1550, remember, is a very key level. And that's, that's for traders. So you say, well, why does that make such a big thing, Steve? We should just stack silver. And that's true. But I believe we're going to get to much higher silver prices in the future through, this, through technical analysis and through key levels. Now, why? Well, here is that rising trend line, which is very important. We see this symmetrical triangle. Silver broke above it. That's a very good sign. But there are two major breakout levels. And they come from here. When silver went back up to this 14 level, when it went above it, it broke out. It went to this 21 and a half level. Then it corrected during the, the market correction we had in 2008. And then when it broke above it, we had another breakout. So we had a breakout at 14 and we had a breakout at 21 and a half. Now, we've got a long ways to go here. Well, it could happen quickly. You never know. But for silver to be in a new bull market, I would say, of course, it's got to get above that 200-month moving average, which is 1676. It's at 1640. But this is the first major key level right here, this 2150. Some say it's at the 20, 2050 level, which is right here. Either way, this seems to be more clear. When it breaks above this, then we could safely say we're in a new silver major bull market. And then the next key level is right here at the 35, which the last time we were at 35 was in 2012. Now, I want to show why these, these levels mean something. Because when you, unfortunately, uh, stock charts only shows us going back to, to 1981. I believe if we went back to the 1970s, and I should get that chart from a different, uh, a different uh, chart service. But we could clearly see in 1982, silver topped right about that 14 level. And it was below it for more than two decades. And it wasn't until 2006 that silver tried to go back above it, but it was actually at the end of 2007 that silver broke out. And when it broke out, we see it going straight up. It touched this 21 and a half level. And then it sold off from the markets. And then we can see when it broke above that 2150 level, then it, it really shot up. So right now, 
this is a good sign. We, the silver price needs to stay above this, this, this symmetrical triangle to stay in a bullish level. But here we can plainly see when you look at a long chart, this is a monthly chart, 40 year chart, these technical levels do mean something to traders. Okay. So moving forward, we need to look at these, these two key levels. The silver price has been above the lower trend line since 2004. We can clearly see that. Since 2004, it's been above this rising trend line. And I would say this is also the cost of production too. Silver back in 2004 only cost about $5 an ounce to produce. Now it's triple. It's in, it's in the $15 range. So this is a good floor for the silver price. But here, the silver price has been below the 50 month moving average since it fell below it in 2013. So it needs to break above it. Once it breaks above it, in the, it's been below it in six years. That's when we know we're in the first, we had the first key level surpassed. And, and right above it is that 200 month moving average at 1676. Now, I showed this, I wanted to show this chart again. This is the gold silver ratio and why it's a good indicator to look at silver when it's kind of peaking. The gold silver ratio goes from to a high and then it, it corrects and then it goes down to a low. Now, this also goes back to 1981. And what's interesting, when silver had the lowest gold-silver ratio, which was in the 30s, it was when unemployment in the United States was near high. You know, we would think, well, if the unemployment rate falls, then there's less demand for silver. Well, that wasn't the case in 1982, 83, when the gold-silver ratio fell to 30, when unemployment was 10.5%. And then it fell below 30 in 2011 when unemployment was at 9.2%. Uh, now, when I did this chart back on July 12th, the gold-silver ratio was 92, almost 93 to 1. That means one ounce of gold can buy you 90, almost 93 ounces of silver. But if we look, this has been a major top area. It could go higher. We see back in 1991, it went to 105. But this has been a major top area. The medium area is at the 65 to 1. It tends to move back down to this 65 to 1. And then there's the low, which is 30. So two weeks ago, it was at night, almost 93 to 1. And... At the close of last Friday, it had fallen to 86, 87 to 1. So it gained almost seven, seven ounces, if you want to put it that way, six, seven ounces in just a short period of time. So and right here, we're seeing the unemployment rate at 3.7. Yes, the unemployment rate is manipulated, but if we use it as a guide, it just goes to show you that silver can perform well during uh, bad economic times. Now, this is a chart that I like to show. I've, I've showed it several times, but it's important. There are six charts here. We've got silver, gold, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, S&P, and Amazon. Now, the 200-month moving average is always a magnet for uh, stocks, indexes, it's, it's where everything tends to go back to to test. And silver nearly did that in 2008. It almost fell down to the 200-month moving average. But look how much higher it was. It was actually 220% higher above the 200-month moving average. But right now, silver is below it. The 200 month moving average, as mentioned several times, is 1676. So silver is 1%, about 1% below it. This is very undervalued. At least gold, gold now at $1,419 is 37% above its 200 month moving average. The NASDAQ is 136% above its 200 month moving average. So when we have a correction, the indexes always go back 
again, the 200 month moving average is a, is a magnet for resetting, uh, getting back to a balance. And actually the NASDAQ went below us before it moved back up. So we could see that the NASDAQ is very overvalued. The Dow Jones, same way. The Dow Jones is actually higher today above the moving average than it was back in 2007-8. It's 88% higher. The S&P is also 88% higher above the 200-month moving average. But the clear winner is Amazon. Amazon is a stunning 400% above it's 200 month moving average. It's trading at $1,943, where it's 200 month moving average is 389. So we could clearly see the stocks, the indexes, and, and many of the tech stocks are severely overvalued. They're overdue for a correction. Silver has corrected. It's, it's been unloved. So when it breaks above this 200 month moving average, it could be a very bullish sign for silver. Uh, gold has broken above this resistance level, but it's 37% above the 200 month moving average. So when the economic situ situation starts to fall apart, we start seeing the Fed, central banks panicking and they start printing money. Uh, silver is, is very much undervalued. These here, these stocks are highly risky. Silver is very, Unrisky. It's a very safe asset to me at this point to own. So in conclusion, I just wanted to tell you going forward, silver needs to break above this, these 50 month moving average. It needs to close above it as well as the uh, 200 month moving average. When it does that, that's the first big step to the major, uh, a major uh, bull market in silver. It, again, it did break out of the symmetrical triangle. That was important, that's the first step. But it needs to break above these key uh, averages for it to get into a new bull market. And when it does move into a new bull market, we'll, we will be looking for 21.50 and $35. These are the two next levels well, if you look right here, silver will probably have resistance right at this level, which is the $26, $27 level. We can see right here. But these are the, the key levels. So once we get above the $17 level, this is where we know silver will be in a new bull market at $21.50. Well, I want to thank you. Uh, I hope some of these uh, technical analysis helps uh, provide some insight to how silver has traded. And clearly we see silver broke out at these technical levels. They do mean a lot to traders. So we have to pay attention to them. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't continue to uh, look at the fundamentals. The fundamentals, of course, are the underlying motivation to move price up or down. But the technical areas add severe motivation or big motivation for traders to either buy more or sell more. So thanks again, and if you haven't subscribed to the SRS Rock Report YouTube channel, please do so. And I appreciate anybody uh, becoming a member, either through Patreon or PayPal. Thank you very much.